Flying at a velocity of 61,000 km per hour, Voyager 1 is one of the fastest moving man-made objects. But even at that speed, it would still take over 70,000 years for it to reach Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to our own. For decades, the question remains, how do we reach the stars without dying in the process? Miguel Alcubierre had the same question, but he came up with the idea of the Alcubierre Warp Drive, a method of how we can traverse faster than the speed of light. This shit doesn't work right now, but I'll explain the theory. Let's first conceptualize space and time as a single four-dimensional manifold called the fabric of space-time. This hologram will represent what space looks like in reality. Also, this diagram can display the distance between Earth and Alpha Centauri. Now, look at this. By warping the space-time in front of the ship downwards, we can compress the distance in front of us. By warping the space-time behind our ship upwards, we can expand the distance behind us. Now look where we are. Haven't we already arrived? How do you warp space, you might ask? Well, that's a strange question. You're actually doing it right now. If we place you on the fabric of space-time, notice how it's warped. This is because, according to relativity, energy can bend space-time. Thus, mass, being directly proportional to energy, is able to do the same thing as well. The larger the mass, the greater space-time bends. So how much mass does our warp drive need? Well, <laughs> the mass of Jupiter, at minimum, but we'll figure it out eventually. The hard part is warping space upwards, because we require the opposite of this, negative mass. Negative mass could exist in the form of exotic matter, but exotic matter might not even exist, so forget about using that. However, there is still hope. If we compare space to the atmosphere, regular mass would be like this rock. It falls because its overall density is greater than air. Negative mass would be like this balloon. It floats because its overall density is less than air. Space, like the air, which is composed of oxygen and such, isn't actually empty. Instead, space is filled with tons of these particles called virtual particles, popping into existence and vanishing in the next moment. Because of their existence, the overall mass or energy of empty space isn't zero. This fact means that we can technically make negative mass ourselves. If we simply place two uncharged conducting metal plates extremely close together, virtual particles with wavelengths longer than the distance between the two plates can't fit into this gap. This means that the overall energy or mass of the space between the plates is lesser than the surrounding space. So this gap essentially has negative mass. This phenomenon is called the Casimir effect. And if we could somehow take advantage of the Casimir effect to create enough negative mass, then the Akubier warp drive may one day become real.